Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag tells the story of Edward Kenway, swashbuckling pirate, father to Haytham and grandfather to Connor, hero of Assassin's Creed 3. Edward is another ancestor of Desmond, but you'd be forgiven for being somewhat confused by the Miles lineage, which includes Ezio Auditore da Firenze and Altair ibn Laahad. We asked Assassin's Creed 4 lead writer Darby McDevitt exactly where the Kenways fit into Desmond's family tree. I, I, I think as long as it got in there, sometimes I write, you know, 90%, 10% uh, of what I write sometimes gets cut from these games accidentally, but I write so much uh, content for this one, I wrote so much content for this one that I hope it all got in. But uh, I do, if you, if you explore, I definitively answer who's on what side. Um, uh, but I won't spoil it now because that's the fun of... But yes, the, the, the key to understanding it though is that the Ezio line, the Altair line, and the, the Kenway line, are all, they are all separate branches that converge on Desmond. Uh, because we wanted to make Desmond back in those days, we wanted to make him, you know, have a, a surplus of first civ genes, um, taken taken individually. Or the Kenways, the the Auditory and the Altair line, they all have some, but it all comes together in Desmond very nicely. Now that we've gone into this, now that we've hinted at this uh, genetic uh, surrogate genetic memory, uh, we can kind of open it up to anything now. Um, I wanted to design the Black Flag was very much a tra transitional game from the first, uh, you know, story arc of Assassin's Creed, the Desmond story. We wanted to use this game to say goodbye to Desmond, come in kind of a, a, an epilogue to Desmond's story, a eulogy, if you will, while we fade in a new chapter. You know, so people who actually miss Desmond will get actually a lot of Desmond content in this, but in in unique ways. Um, and we're going to see where you're going to be taking the franchise uh, forward. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably hint at things, but we'll, we'll hint in a frustrating way. We'll, we'll give you more hints than you could possibly use. So, some clues about where we'll be going next, but for the time being, we're going to be pirates on the high seas. So, was being a pirate something the team had wanted to do for a while, or did it stem from the impressive naval combat sequences created for Assassin's Creed 3? It was a, a combination of when I was working on Revelations, we were already seeing AC3's naval combat come in. They made Singapore made it, and they made very quick progress very early, and we loved it. And we thought, oh God, you, could you imagine an open world game with, on, on the high seas? And around that same time, where because we knew we were doing Haytham and Edward, we thought, why don't we do a family saga rather than see Ezio grow up? You know, one man grow up. Why don't we sh tell the story of a family? And those gradually come together. We're like, hey, look, if we just go back 30 years from the start of AC3, we're in the golden age of piracy with Blackbeard right there. Yeah. And so it, it just kind of it was a low-hanging fruit, and we picked it. And the other thing we wanted to do was we'd had a couple games now where Ezio and Connor both um, are, are propelled by personal tragedy into the assassins. They don't really, they don't really question that the assassins' goals or. Um, they're just like, that sounds good to me, I, I have an affinity with that, let's go for it. I wanted to use this opportunity to tell a story about the creed and about somebody who initially doesn't think it's very interesting, thinks it's limiting, thinks it's kind of... Uh, uh, he, he likes the chaos of piracy. So I think actually uh, by using pirates who were nominally democratic uh, but still had no problems harming innocents, and the assassins who love liberty above all else uh, and, and are opposed to tyranny um, in a kind of libertarian kind of uh, way, um, as opposed to authoritarianism. Um, I wanted to write a story that showed where are the overlaps, where are the conflicts, and I think that um, even though this is a game about a pirate caught in the middle of an assass assassin Templar war, if you actually listen to what's happening in the story and see what how people are, the Templars and Assassins are hammering on Edward to be a better man, come with us, come with us. This is actually, this story is actually more about the Creed than I think a couple, some of the other games have been. Um, even though I know that there are some people who have questions and doubts about whether a pirate game and an Assassin's Creed game could exist side by side. And I can rest assured that this game has, I think, as many main assassinations as AC1 has. Um, and we brought back the assassin contracts from AC2, so the pigeon coop. We went to great lengths to make really amazing little setups. You know, we, we worked our asses off to make stealth better, and I think it's fantastic. And I think so, by the end of the experience, people will say like, ah, this is like peanut butter and chocolate. It, it does taste good together, um, and people won't, uh, 
they'll, they'll be sad they ever question me. Now, one of the main pastimes of series fans is speculating about where the Assassin's Creed series could head next, with feudal Japan, Victorian London, ancient Rome, and the Russian Revolution all being popular fan suggestions. Do the Assassin's Creed team pay attention to the forum and Reddit speculation? There's actually a, a main path uh, in the present day. There's At some point in the main path, I think this is what we did. It's there, I just... I'm 90% I'm, I'm sure it's in the main path. It might be extra content, though. We actually, we actually poke fun of the speculation where we have a massive email thread between all the upper management um, and, uh, and all the employees asking where should we research next. And uh, so <laughs> fans will leave that email conversation even more frustrated than because I give them even more uh, fat to chew on. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yes, I read the forums much to the detriment of my health too, and Reddit. I think it's important. I think the the main reason I read the forums is because uh, I I have my own ideas about what I think will make a good Assassin's Creed. I have faith in myself as a storyteller for the most part, um, and so the fans don't influence me so much in that regard. But I do think it's important as a writer to say to see what things have we been clear about, what are fans still confused about. Because there are a lot of things that they were confused about that we didn't never intended them to be confused about, like, um, you know, like I always get this question at, at, at uh, panels, like, um, can Templars have eagle vision? It's like, yes, they can, and and it was always designed that, uh, you know, with the first Civ and stuff, that all human beings have the potential for eagle vision. Mm -hmm. It's how and assassin training unlocks it, yeah. and of course, some people have. Uh, a higher concentration it's, it's more, more nat it comes to them more naturally but this was something that was like bewildering for people for three or four games and we're like so I say it explicitly in this game there's a moment in the mission where you're kind of Edward's always had eagle vision but there's an assassin explaining what it is he's like oh yeah it's that you. And, 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 and it's explained very clearly like well all people have potential but you seem to have it come naturally anyway so it's those things where I go like, why are they confused about that? I thought I was clear in the last game. They clearly didn't get it. So that's what's important about the forums is, is seeing how successful we are at story, as storytellers. Um, but no, no one's ever going to write to me and say like, you should do this era. And I'm, and, oh, okay. Hey, yeah, you're right. I've, already got, I've already got my eras that I want to do. And yeah. uh, if I can't get mine made, I'm not going to listen to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Finally, the big question I think all fans of Assassin's Creed will want clearing up. The big question mark hanging over the series. Who would win in a fight between Altair, Ezio, Connor and Edward? Oh my goodness, I don't know. Probably Edward because he's, he's dirty. He fights dirty. He's got the most guns. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is out on October 29th in the US and November the 1st in Europe. For more, hit the link on screen to find out more about Abstergo Entertainment, Animus Omega and exactly what is going on in the game's modern day sections now that we're no longer playing as Desmond Miles. Thanks for watching.